Good evening. Praise the Lord. Saints, God bless you all tonight. Amen. Who we got on the line tonight? Come on in here, saints. Amen. Let's give God Amen. the Amen. praise. Let's give God the glory. Amen. For he's worthy to be praised. And the beauty of the Lord is that we thank God for this great opportunity to be on here with you all tonight, saints. We're in our journey in the book of Revelations, and we have gotten to the point where we're at what the Bible calls the seven seals, the seven seals, seven seals. Now, saints, we need to understand something before we even get started. There's seven seals, seven trumps, and seven vows. The seals are not in chronological order, but the trumps are because the trumps signal that sound signals an event. Amen? So let us go into our Bible and look at Revelations. I think I'm going to start in verse 5 for a minute because you know, so many times, chapter 5, so many times people will tell you that you can't understand the book of Revelation. This book of Revelation, the word Revelation means to be revealed. In Greek, it's called the Apocalypse. That means to open, to open. Yeah. Amen? And you have to realize something, that God has given us a door that no man can shut. Amen? He opens a door that, listen, when he opens up this door, it opens up our understanding. God has given us the seven spirits of God here on the earth. That means we're supposed to have knowledge. We're supposed to have wisdom. Come on now. Okay? We're supposed to have, listen, and, 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 and because we have those seven spirits of God, we ought to be able to understand this book. So, saints, let us go. I'm going to start in chapter 5, amen, and then we're going to move on uh, and go on to chapter 6. But I want to show you why you're supposed to understand these seven seals. These seven mm -hmm. seals. Don't let anybody ever tell you that this book of Revelation is off limits. Don't let them tell you that. Don't let somebody tell you that you can't understand it. You understand? Don't let anybody ever tell you that this book is too hard for you to understand because many of you already, you went through the seven churches. You found that was only two churches that God was pleased with. They showed up in Revelation chapter 11, verse 4. So, you know, you understand what the book is saying. You understand? Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why we have this book, so we have understanding and wisdom about mm -hmm. what's going to happen, what consummates the end of this age. Now, saints, I hear the bell ringing, people all over the world. God bless you all. Uh, welcome to our Magnify Him Bible study line. Amen. And we're going to go into prayer. You're going to pick me up. I'm going to pick up in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 1 because I want to show the reason why. And these first six verses of Revelation chapter 5, why you should be able to understand these seals, these seals. Mm -hmm. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for opening up our minds to understand the wonders out of your law. Lord, we repent for anything we've done that would hinder your work from going forth. But God, mm -hmm. I praise you tonight for your holy, your holy word, God. We just invoke your presence, God. We just ask you in Jesus' name, if you'll just reveal things, open up our minds, that we may understand yeah. the wonders out of your law. Father, we yes, ask Lord. you to teach us tonight because we're hungry. We're hungry and thirsting yes, after righteousness. And the Bible says yes. when we do that, we shall be filled. So, God, we ask you in Jesus' name that you'll touch our heart, minds, and Christ yes, Jesus tonight. We yes. pray amen. 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 Come on in here. I hear amen. you bell ringing. Amen. All right, so now, I thank God for the many people that are tuned in tonight, and we're going to come in, Memphis will be in Revelation chapter 5, we're going to start there, you know, Philadelphia, you know, New Jersey, we're in Revelation chapter 5, okay, Merlin, this is where we're going to start, all right, it says right here, Revelation chapter 5, verse 1, and this is the reason why you, ha you can understand the seals, I'm going to prove it to you, he says, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. Seven mm -hmm. seals. Now, the number seven always means completion. Okay? So this is a long scroll, okay, that has seven seals around it. It's got the string, and it's got wax on the end of that seal that shows that it's totally sealed. Totally sealed. It's got seven seals. Watch this. Okay. And he says, and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, this is no, nothing weak, this is nobody soft, this is a bold angel proclaiming with a loud voice. He said, who is worthy to open the book 
and to loose the seals thereof. Now, let me explain something to you, saints. It's only one way that you'll ever understand these seals. Only one way you'll ever understand these trumps. Only one way you'll ever understand the vows mm -hmm. is that it has to go through Jesus. Okay? God has to open up your mind to understand this word. Are you listening? The only way we get anything is through Jesus. It's through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. So he's telling you how you got to get it. Nobody can open this thing up but Jesus only. Nobody else is worthy. Because you got to realize something, and I don't want to get into last week too much, but you got to realize something, Adam and Eve was in the garden. Paradise lost was paradise gained. They believe that you could be like God by being disobedient. Mm. Mm. And Jesus came to show you the only way to Christ is by being obedient. Amen. Okay? Because you've got to have the spirit. You've got to have the word in your heart and mind. Watch this. Verse 3. Stay with me for a minute. He said, no man in heaven... No on earth could no man do it. Nobody on earth, neither under the earth, but listen, the devil can't do it. Nobody else was able to open the book. Neither look thereon. Okay? It was no way in the world that anybody else could do it. All right? And he opened it up. And who he opened it up to? He opened it up to me and you. Are you listening tonight? He opened up the book for me and you. The only way we get it is if you got the spirit of the living God in you. Amen. Watch Amen. This. And John said, I wept much because no man was found worthy to open. Because we've all been born in sin, shaped in iniquity. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Amen. He said, there's none righteous but the Father. Amen. Are you listening to me? He was the only one holy enough to open up this scroll. <laughs> Amen. And to read the book, neither, listen, neither to look thereon. Amen. Now, John is about to get sad. John is about to get real sad because John is saying to himself, you know, this is the, the wisdom that we need. Amen. That's right. Watch Amen. this. Verse 5. And one of the elders, good God Almighty, I thank God for the elders. Amen. He saith unto me, weep not. He said, Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed, you understand, to mm -hmm. open the book and to loose the seals thereof. <laughs> now, what is he trying to say? He said, Jesus is the one that can open this book and reveal the truth thereof unto you. Okay. I want you to pay attention to this sixth verse. Watch this. And then we go on to the Revelation chapter 6. But just let me get this last verse in. He said, I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts. Now, don't get spooked by these beasts. Because all they are is the ones that guard the throne day and night. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is not something hideous. This is not mm -hmm. something wicked. Okay? Mm -hmm. These are the beasts that guard the throne. And he says, in the midst. Of the elders stood a lamb. Now, let me explain something to you before I go any further. The reason why it's important for you to see this lamb, Jesus Christ, because let me tell you something, this is the last hope for man. You listen to what I'm telling you. Because when we get to chapter 6, we're going into a time like never before, judgment. See, mm -hmm. he shows himself as a lamb, five symbolizing grace. He shows himself as a lamb, listen, that is slain, still offering. Are you listening to me? This blessing Amen. to the world. Amen. Now you turn your back on him, here comes, here comes the judgment. Mm. He's slain. Watch what it says. He said, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, it had been slain. Watch mm -hmm. this. Having seven horns. Mm -hmm. The word horns always symbolize power. Always mm -hmm. in the Bible. That horn symbolizes his power. Watch this. He said, and seven eyes. And this morning on our Bible study, you learned about how Job made a covenant with his eyes in Job chapter 31. 
Uh-huh. Not to look upon another woman. Mm-hmm. Not to look on a woman to lust. Amen? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Deep, when we talk about his eyes, you know we're talking about holy. We're talking about holy now. Now watch this. Yeah. And he said, which are the seven spirits of God. Now listen, pay close attention. Listen, stay in the word. What does he say? Sent forth into what? All the earth. The yeah. earth. Amen. Now, saints, if anybody tell you that you can't understand it, you go right here to Revelation chapter 5 and verse 6 and say, wait a minute. God sent the wisdom, all of the seven spirits of God, into the earth so I could understand them. Amen. What? Tell me you can't understand. Listen, he sent he sent the spirit of the Lord. He sent the spirit of wisdom. He sent the spirit of understanding. He sent, sent the spirit of counsel. He sent the spirit of knowledge. He sent the listen the spirit of piety, which is reverence, and the fear of the Lord from Isaiah chapter eleven, verse one to three. So don't tell me I can't understand it. When God said where did he send the wisdom to? It says right here he sent the wisdom into all Oh, the the earth. Amen. Oh, the earth. Oh. Let me tell you something. God ain't trying to hide nothing from you, Mother Hobbs. He's not trying Amen. to hide nothing from you. Mother, listen, listen. Augustine, he's Amen. not trying. Augustine, Ernestine, listen to me closely. God is not trying to hide this word from none of y'all. Amen. 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 I told you what a, what, a, what a mother told me years ago. She said, Pastor E, if they ever want to hide something, put it in the book. Because most Christians would never read their Bible. They never read their Bible. They go along with whatever some man say up there in the pulpit because he got a collar. He's jumping up and down, hollering, screaming. They think that's what... Listen, listen. I am not religious. I want you to understand that. Because this Bible is reality to me. I don't need to be religious. I need to be for real. All right, saints. Amen. All right, somebody got to put their phone on mute. I hear a lot of background noise. Let's go to Revelation chapter 6. If you just came on, you're right on time. We get ready going to the seven seals. Okay, let's move. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. Y'all with me? Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen, amen out there. If you're with me, come on in. Amen. 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 All right, Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. He said, now I saw when the Lamb opened up one of the seals. This is the first seal. The first seal. And I heard, as it was the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. Come and see. He wants you to see. Now, first of all, I want you to realize that the book of Job tells us that God is the one that sends the storms, that sends the rain, that sends the tornadoes. You've got to realize something. What you're seeing right now is God's judgment within the earth. That's what you're seeing. Amen. Now, I told you, you want to make sure you make it to the convocation because the convocation is the convocation of convergency. Convergency. This convocation is the convocation of convergency. Andrew, the reason why it's called the convocation of convergency is because all during our lives we've seen storms, we've seen earthquakes, We've seen, listen, we've seen uh, a famine, we've seen disease, but saints, this is the first time in history you're seeing it all happen at the same time. Amen. <laughs> That's Amen. a sign. That's a sign. Believe me when Amen. I tell you it's a sign. Amen. Hang around and I'll show you. Now watch this. He says, come and see. Come and see. God's going to let you look. <laughs> okay? Amen. Okay? You're about to take a look. And what he's about to show you. And this is what you better take time to look at. See? Amen. We're looking at prosperity. We're looking at Amen. money. We're looking at everything Amen. else in the church. But what we're supposed to be looking at. Amen. All right? We're supposed to be looking at this word. Amen. All right? Amen. Yeah. Now, first of all, I want to tell you something about the seals. I think I already told you. It's not in chronological order. Okay? The trumps are, but the seals are not. Okay, let's move on. I want to show you something, saints. All my life they've been preaching and teaching to me that the Antichrist is coming last and Christ is coming first. When I read Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 20, it says, Woe to them that teach God's people to fly to save their souls. 
Ezekiel 13 and 20. Now, all through the Bible, Mark 13, Luke 21, Matthew 24, all say the same thing, Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. All right? You can line up what I'm about to teach in these seals right in Mark chapter 13, because they're all there. Every last one of them. Let me show you something. He says, and I saw, right here in verse 2, Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. Watch this, deacon. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. Mm -hmm. And he sat on him, had a bow. A bow. And the fourth conquered and to conquer. Now watch mm -hmm. this. See, we got to get this in our spirit. God has already overcome the world. <laughs> Are you mm -hmm. listening to me? Amen. So this one that's coming to conquer can't be Jesus, because Jesus has already overcome the world. Amen. <laughs> and he Amen. says here that he's on a white horse. And saints, you got to realize something, that this white horse is not Jesus Christ. This Amen. is the Antichrist who's been thrown from his plateau of accusing the brothers and sisters onto mm -hmm. the earth. Now watch this. Mm -hmm. I want to show you something. He said, behold, that means you, you should be able to see this. He has a crown on, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason why he's got a crown on because he is the prince of the power of the air. He has a crown. He has mm -hmm. a crown. Let me show you this. This word bow right here that you see in Revelation chapter 6, verse 2, that word bow, let me tell you what it means. That word bow here is not rainbow, mm -hmm. as in the multicolored colors that you see in the sky that comes from God's promise. That word mm -hmm. bow is from the word rainbow that comes from those colors you see in the sky that indicate some of a promise. But this word bow does not mean that. This yeah. word bow comes from the Greek word toxin. Toxin. And the word toxin is not as a bow as a rainbow, but it means a cheap fake imitation. A cheap fake imitation. In fact, this word toxin, this word bow right here, Revelation chapter 6 verse 2, that word bow means this. A cheap cloth fabrication. In other mm -hmm. words, it's the false Christ, not the real Christ. Mm -hmm. It's a fake imitation. That's what that mm -hmm. word bow means. Are you mm -hmm. listening to me tonight? I want to make sure you're getting this now. I don't want to lose you. So this mm -hmm. one you see right here with this crown, all right? This is the fake and false Christ. Now. Let's go to verse 3. He said, and when he had opened the second seal, we had the second seal. Somebody say second seal. Second seal. Second seal. He said, I heard the beast say, come and see. He says, look again. Look again. Watch this. He says, verse 4, and there went out another horse that was red. That was red. That was red. Now watch this. And power was given unto him that sat on the throne to take peace from the earth. Now, what does this red horse do? This red horse comes and takes peace from the earth. Remember mm -hmm. something. The red horse symbolizes war. Yes. The red horse symbolizes war. Amen. War. The Antichrist comes, Sister Meredith. The Antichrist comes. Okay, he comes down to earth, the next horse that is just like that white one, he comes and he's red, and he symbolizes what? War, because look what it says. And the power was given unto him thereon to take what? Peace from the earth. Peace from the earth. And they that should, kill, and that they should do what? Kill one another. Mm -hmm. oh. And there was given unto him a great sword. <laughs> a great sword. A great sword. Taking peace out the earth. Peace out the earth. A great sword. 
Now listen. This is for you to see. He says, look again. And here's another one, actually just like the first one, but this one is red. The first one is white. Okay? Now, saints, the red horse is the war horse. And okay. this is why in Revelation chapter 5, it shows you the lamb slain. That's given the last opportunity to be saved, to come to him before the judgment hits. And we come right into Revelation chapter 6, and as soon as we get here, what do we see? The judgment coming upon the earth. Amen. Stay with the word. Then he says, this sword that he's got is a sword that will destroy. Okay? It will destroy. Now, when Jesus comes, now listen to this. This is how you know it ain't Jesus. When Jesus comes, he destroys Satan by what? The word of his mouth. Amen. The word of his mouth. Why? Because he's the one that has the what? Two-edged sword. Oh, hallelujah. Let me teach this thing tonight. Amen. Okay? Now watch this. And saints, you got to realize something, that a lot of people, they get it in their mind that it's a physical war. But saints, remember, John is in the spirit Amen. on the Lord's yes. death. On the Lord's Amen. death. He's That's able right. to see one, he's able to see three things. He's right Amen. there in Revelation chapter 1, where he shows him everything that was before. Mm. Okay? Then he shows him everything that is in the seven churches. And when we get uh -huh. to Revelation chapter 4, that starts the future. So since you're looking at the future, all right, yes. God is in the spirit. And he shows him the three different dimensions in this book of Revelation, the three dispensations in time. He shows him everything that was in the past. He showed him everything that was going on there with the seven churches. And then he shows him everything that comes up in the future after Revelation chapter 4. Somebody say, stay in the word. Stay in the word. Stay in the word. Watch this. Now, there's a lot of people that think that this war is a physical war. No, saints. It's a spiritual war. Amen. Now, somebody say, wait a minute, Pastor. Because let me tell you something who the war is against. The war is against those that really know Christ. <laughs> the war is against those that truly know the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Amen. And let me prove it to you. Let's jump over to Mark 13 for a minute. Let's go to Mark 13. For, let me show it to you in the practical terms over here in Mark 13. So you'll realize that we're right on point. Okay? Because I don't want nobody to be lost. All right? All right? Yeah. We'd like to put it where the goats can get it. I'm going to read it so you can get to understand it. Let me show you this war. Watch this. If the war is against the saints that have the truth in their mind, look at this. Mark chapter 13, uh, let's come in around verse 7. Mark 13 and verse 7. And I'm reading out a new international version so everybody can understand it. All right? When you hear wars and rumors of wars, look what he says. Do not be alarmed. Don't be ashamed, it says in King James Verse. But don't be afraid. He says such things must happen. But look what he says. But the end is still to come. In other words, the end is not yet. Watch what he says. Nation will rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. Right here from Revelation chapter 6. And there will be earthquakes in various places. I done told you now. What you see and going on the earth is a sign. And Amen. famine. Amen. And these are the beginnings yeah. of what? Birth pains. Or somebody understand it's the beginning of sorrows. It's only the beginning. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. He said, you must be on guard. I'm reading out new international version. Don't be tripping on me. He mm -hmm. said, you will be handed over to local councils and flogged in the synagogues. Now listen, this can't be God's synagogue. Mm-hmm. Because our God is not abusive. Yes, this has got to be the synagogue of Satan. It's got yes, to be the right. synagogue of Satan. This cannot yes. be God's synagogue. Yes. Mm -hmm. Moses got in trouble for, remember, hitting the rock, striking the yes. rock. Yes. He, yes, blew, right. he blew the image of God's spirituality. 
You ain't got to be God for nothing. All you got to do is ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door be opened. Let's keep moving. He said you're dead before governors and kings as a witness to them. Witness for what? And the gospel must be first preached to all nations. And whenever you are arrested, oh, wait a minute, Pastor, we ain't going to jail. Some of us will. And the Bible said it's to be for 10 days. Ten days. He said, and brought the trial. He said, do not worry beforehand what to say. Okay? Because yeah. you got some preacher going to be trying to make up a sermon. Get real, man. This is, this is, <laughs> brother, he said, just say whatever is given to you at that time. Why? For well, it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit is speaking through you. Amen. 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 That's spiritual war. Okay? All right, let's go. Let's go on back over here now. Some of y'all still you still with me? Say amen. All right. Amen. Say amen. All right. Amen. So now Mark thirteen brings these seven seals into everyday life. Because I can teach it out of Mark, Luke. I can teach it out a whole lot of places in the Bible. All right? Watch this. Now, the war, let me tell you what the war is about, saints. The war is in your, it's going on because the war is in between those that have the truth and those that are being deceived. Amen. Those that have the truth and those, see, see, there's no way in the world that you're going to tell me that I'm wrong, that I'm lying, amen. that I'm not telling the truth, because you're reading amen. it for yourself. Amen, amen. Amen. <laughs> if I'm a lie, Thank Paul you. a lie. If Paul allowed Mark is a lie, if Mark allowed Luke is a lie, huh? Come on now. And let me tell you something. This, and let me tell you something. If we lie, Jesus lied too. Because Jesus taught us on the Sermon on the Mount. This is exactly what it was teaching. Amen. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Y'all pray with me tonight because this thing is getting really, really good. All right, Amen. let's go on. Let's go on now. Remember, first comes the false Christ, toxin. Okay, a fake imitation of God with a temporary crown. He's only able to listen, he's only able to rule on the earth for five and a half months. The Bible said that God shortened the time for even the very listen, if God didn't shorten the time, even the very elect, the Bible said, wouldn't be able to be saved. Okay? Amen. Now watch this. So now, first we see the white horse, the fake one, the antichrist. Then we see the red horse, okay, the war horse, the battle in your mind, okay? And this is the reason why Revelation chapter 13 says that they received the mark in their forehead, not on their forehead. A lot of, a lot of people don't live between in and on, okay? The hat goes on your head. But he said the mark is in your brain. That means what you are thinking in your mind about the Antichrist being the real Christ. Let's move on. Verse 5, Revelation chapter 6. And when he had opened the third seal, third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, it was a black horse. And he sat on him, had a pair of balances in his hands. Now, do you, listen, note Amos chapter 8. Amos chapter 8. I want you to take note of this. Amos chapter 8, verse 1 to 5. Amos said that the famine in the land will not be for food or drink, but the famine in the land will be for the hearing of the words of the Lord. Amen. 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 <laughs> now, this black horse, listen to me closely. After the white horse comes, then the red horse comes war. And listen, saints, after war, what usually comes after war? Famine. Famine. The black horse is representing famine. Okay? And he has these balances in his head. Watch this now. Stay with me. He said, and I heard the voice in the midst of these four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. 
and see that thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now, let me see if I can deal with this thing about penny, about the penny. Now, some of you are sitting on the line today. You know, you're doing good, okay? You, you're rolling. You know, you got some money in the bank, okay? But don't think just because you're doing good that you're not in a famine. Let me see if I can blow that up, okay? Okay, you pay, listen, you pay, let's say you pay $50,000. So let's say a house is $50,000. And you get the bill, you're looking at, you want to find out how much is going toward the principal and how much is going to the loan. Okay, let me show you, you're in a family. Okay, let's say, then we're making a payment of $1,000 today. Okay. $900 goes to the financing, only 100 goes to the principal. Are you listening to me tonight? Are you listening to me tonight? You go buy a car right now, you're going to be paying interest, but how much goes to the principal? You pay interest, how much goes to the principal of the house? Then you sit back and tell me if you ain't in a famine. Call up your bank institution. Find out how much is going toward the principal and how much is going toward the finance. And then you'll call me back tomorrow and say, you know what, Pastor, you're right. We are in a family. Mm -hmm. Okay? Amen. Okay? Because that dollar Amen. you got in your pocket ain't worth a dollar. Amen. Okay? Amen. All right? I remember time. I, listen, I remember time I go to the store and get four, five pieces of bubble gum for five cents. You go to the store now, you're going to pay. Listen, I went to go, listen, I went to go buy some Reese cups. Two Reese cups in a pack. Now, I remember a time I paid 25 cents for two Reese cups. It was $2.36. Amen. And you tell me, have you checked the price of eggs lately? Have you checked the price of eggs? Yeah. <laughs> How many of you go to the store? And you got a hundred dollar bill, and you look in your cart, and you still don't have nothing. Don't tell me we're not going through a family. Don't tell me we're not going through a family. Yes, Lord. I don't know who your pastor is, but he done told you a lie. Listen, they can talk prosperity all they want. You understand? But remember, prosperity ain't never saved nobody. Never. Not one person on this earth ever got saved with prosperity. You better believe you're in a family. You, you need some, you know what, let me, let me go on stand before I stay there too long, okay? <laughs> Look at verse 7. And when he opened up the fourth seal, can you believe this? You understand this word. You're already at the fourth seal. Mm -hmm. I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. Come and see. Mm -hmm. And I look and behold a pale horse. What? Mm -hmm. A pale horse. A pale horse. And the name that sat on him was death. Now, after the false Christ comes, the next thing comes is the war horse. After, to tell you how simple it is. The war horse is red. The next thing comes is famine. And anybody that knows anything about life knows that after the war comes, then comes famine. Come on now. And after famine, what comes? It comes death. Can I get a witness? That's just how simple it is. Watch this. Now, this is the reason why I'm telling you be careful not to be deceived. Because, see, one thing I know, and I know you know too, be careful. The white horse can sometimes deceive you when it's the pale horse. The pale horse, somebody got to put their phone on mute. I hear background noise. The pale horse and the white horse look very similar, but they're not. He said the name that set on him was death. Mm -hmm. And hell followed with him. Hell followed with him. Now, I want you to understand this beast to keep telling you to come and see is from the throne of God. Okay? And he said, come and see. Okay? Through what? Through the Lord Jesus Christ. Come mm -hmm. see through the word of God. Remember, Jesus Christ was the word that became flesh, all right? And he'll open up your mind to understand this word, okay? And when you have this word in you and you have those seven spirits of God, you got to realize something. You got eyes to see. You got eyes to see. 
You got Amen. eyes to see. And if you're on this line tonight and you're part of Magnified Ministry, I know you got eyes to see because you've been talking. Amen. Amen. Watch this. Verse 8. Watch this, Pastor Hart. And I look and behold, a pale horse in his name that said on him was death, and hell followed him. And the power was given. Wait a minute, hold up. Let me back up for a minute. Go back up to verse 6. Go back up to verse 6 because there's something here I don't, want you, uh, I, don't want, I, I don't want you to miss. Do you see here at the end of verse 6 it says, And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Why does he say, See not hurt the oil and the wine? Well, you've got to realize something. When he's talking about this oil here, saints, he's talking about the anointing oil of God's people. He's telling them, Look, don't touch God's people. Amen. You understand? Because they have the truth in their head. He said, do not touch God's people. And when it talks about this wine here, he's talking about the blood that was shed on Calvary Cross for the forgiveness of your sins. He said, do not touch God's people. Now let's go back down to eight. I'm sorry I missed that, but I had to go back and get that straight. All right? Now, I don't want you to fall into this deception. Okay? Because it's going to be deception. Because that pale horse is death. And the angel of death. Now it's easy to be confused between that pale horse and the white horse. But don't be deceived. Now I keep telling somebody you got to put your phone on mute. I hear a lot of background noise. Okay? If you're not on mute, put it on mute. Now this second word, death here. And it's important because you see this word death twice in the scripture. And he looked behold a pale horse. And the name on him was death. Okay, that's one death. But I want you to look at the second. He said, and power was given over them to, to over, the, over a fourth part of earth, not the whole earth, a part of earth, to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death. Now, that second word death is where I want to draw your attention to tonight because this is very important thing. Okay, this second word death here, it means venomous beast, venomous beast, venomous beast. Now, we got to realize something, saints. If you never had our study on the four hidden dynasties, Satan has four hidden dynasties stand that he operates in the earth. Listen to this, Pastor Hart. Listen to this, Deacon Tracy. Make sure you get this, Deacon Hobbs. Make sure you hear this, Danny's. Make sure you hear this. Ernestine, make sure you hear this, Mother Patricia. Make sure you get this, Mother Ernestine. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. Satan has four hidden dynasties that he uses to rule over the earth. I'm going to give them to you. The four hidden dynasties that Satan rules with, number one is education. Now somebody about to fall out their chair. That's right. That's a hidden dynasty. And let me tell you why. Because some people are so educated, they think they're too smart to sit Amen. down and listen to the word. Amen. Amen. They're so educated that they don't want to hear what the Bible got to say because they think they're already smarter mm. than everybody else because they got degrees. Amen. So what happens is Satan's able to operate, okay, and make people think that the word of God really doesn't have no effect because they think that they're already wiser than God. So did Eve. Mm -hmm. Eve thought the same mm -hmm. thing. But she found out she wasn't. Listen, kingdoms have fell because they thought they were wiser than God. Let me give you the second hidden, hidden dynasty. The second hidden dynasty that Satan uses to control the earth is economics. Mm -hmm. Economics. Mm -hmm. Because you've got some people that are so rich they think that they, they, they don't got to listen to the word of God. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. they, they listen. Mm -hmm. Their God is their money. Yeah. You understand? So the simplistic part of the gospel goes over their head. They feel as though they ain't got to listen to you. You understand? Do you know, let, let me say this, you know, I had someone even in my own place that say, you know what, you know, you was homeless at 14, you know, on the street, 17, shot down, left for dead, you dropped out of school in 10th grade. You know, what college did you go through to be over a, a ministry like this? And I said, you know, I learned everything I learned on my knees. I asked Amen. God, and God called me. Listen, I didn't call God. God called me. And Amen. he told me, ask me, and I will teach you great and mighty things that you know not. Amen. And I believe God. Okay? Amen. And I learned through tears. And I said, yes, I had to study much harder than a whole lot of people. 
I wouldn't mm -hmm. they even ever listen. I sat down seven years and learned the Bible from each book, one book to another. Never mm -hmm. preached nowhere. You understand? Mm -hmm. I said so. Yes, it wasn't easy. But let me tell you something. When God anoints you and gives you a gift, you can't deny it. And the Amen. Bible says that the gift Amen. and the call of God are without repentance. Amen. Okay? So I had to go with it. Amen. And then I was the same one that preached the funeral. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's go to the, ne to the next hidden dynasty. The next Amen. hidden dynasty that Satan rules over earth with is the political, political Amen. system. Amen. Political system. You understand? The political system. I'm going to give you the last one that may shock you. It's a religious system. Mm -hmm. Religious system. Mm -hmm. Because some people are so religious. Let me tell you something. The hardest person to convince what's in this word sometimes is people that are religious. Amen. Because they believe in a system. Mm -hmm. But they don't believe Amen. in a biblical straight, that's a straight Bible. You Amen. tell them so straight out of the Bible. Well, I, I, you know, in, in our church, we, we, you know, we, we, we believe that baptism is the number one thing. Mm. You know, in our church, we, we believe that speaking in tongues, if you ain't speaking in tongues, you ain't saved. Mm -hmm. You got people that believe in systems. You understand? Mm -hmm. If you're not sprinkled, mm -hmm. you understand? You haven't went through your catechism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something. Religious people miss the whole point. Because remember, Jesus came against the religious establishment. Amen. Are you listening to me? The whole book of Colossians was written to move us from, listen, from, from religiosity, from ceremonialism, into biblical reality. Amen. Okay, this is real tonight. Let's roll. Okay, let's go on. All right, verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar... Saints, I want everybody to listen to me real good. Look at this verse 9. He said, when he opened up the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Saints, let me explain something what I just showed you. The Lord just showed you where great-grandma was that loved the Lord and who, listen, would not fall for any of the deception of the devil. He just showed you where your grandmother is, where mama is, where granddaddy is, where uncle is that believed and loved the Lord. Let me explain something to you. They are under this altar. Absent from the body is present with the Lord, Danny. Present with the Lord. And if absent from the body is present with the Lord, the people that he's talking about right here are our ancestors in the faith. Are you listening to me? Amen. And they're under that altar. Grandma, let me tell you, I don't know who believes running around telling people that your love was in a hole in the ground. The Amen. devil is a lie. Amen. My Bible tells me absent from the body is present with the Lord. And let's Amen. go a little bit further on this thing. He said, and look what he says, and white robes were given to every last one of them. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Mm. These saints are, listen, grandma's up under that altar. Great granddaddy's under that altar. This is where the saints from the beginning of time that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, you shall be saved and absent from the body is present with the Lord. And let me tell you something, this is exactly who's up under this altar, those that were faithful in the word of God. Amen. Okay? So do you, if these are those that had the testimony of the Lamb. Amen. Look, he, listen, listen, and let me tell you something. You got it right now. Amen. Jesus. You have it with you right now. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. And let me Amen. tell you something. No matter, listen to this, saints. Let me explain something to you. No matter whether you're in your spiritual body or in mm. your flesh body, listen to yes. me closely. If you're in your flesh mm. body or your spiritual body, one thing don't change. And you know what that is? Your soul. Amen. Your soul. Amen. Your Amen. soul don't change, baby. Your soul don't change. So whether you live, live, live or dead, your soul is the same. <laughs> so if you got the truth on this side of heaven, on this side of heaven, you're going to have the same soul on that side. Are you listening? Amen. Okay? Amen. And that soul means it's still you. 
Yes, it is. So, grandma, granddaddy, not the hole in the ground. No. Absent from the body is present with the Lord. Their soul is with the Lord. And I want you to see what it says right here, Stan. Listen, this is where mama is. Are you listening yes. to me? Amen. This yes. is where my grandma, this is where my grandmother is. Yes. This is where Thank your you family Lord. is. Listen, it's time yes. now for getting in these churches. A whole bunch of religious mess. Teach me the Bible, man. Tell yes. me where my mama is. Tell Amen. me where my daddy is. Amen. If you're the preacher, preach and teach. Preaching is a twofold gift. Preacher and teacher. If you look in the languages, listen, it says some were apostles, some were prophets, some were evangelists. But when it gets to preaching and teaching, it don't say the. It mm-hmm. doesn't say the. That means that preaching and teaching is a twofold. Listen, it's one gift. Under two different actions, under two Amen. different points of service. Are you listening to me tonight? Watch yes. this, verse 11. Welcome to the Bible study tonight. I'm in Revelation chapter 6, verse 11. I don't want to lose nobody. Now watch this. To each of the, to your great-grandmama was given a white robe, man. Okay? Okay? Mm-hmm. Get that mess out your head mm-hmm. that they in some hole in the ground. Get that mm-hmm. out your head. I don't know. The Bible do not teach that. Amen. And white robes were given unto every one of them. Amen. And it was said unto them, this is what God said to my grandmother, said to your mother, yes. said to your daddy, yes. said to your yes. aunt, said to your uncle. Yes. Amen. He said, listen, he said, listen, he said, listen, they, were, they, 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 they got these white robes. And they kept asking Jesus in verse 10, said, Oh Lord, holy and true, do it. he said, Do it thou not judge and avenge our blood. Man. And then the draw on the earth. Now, if you don't think this is real, why did he say the blood that was here on the earth? Because saints, whether you realize or not, these people had blood, had veins, just like you. Amen. And then he said on the earth, they were on the earth just like you. That's why they said, will you avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Why? Because they had blood in their bodies and they were on the earth just like you. Amen. (laughs) And then they were given robes. To every one of them, and it was said to them that they should rest. He said, You know what? Just rest, mother. Just rest. Yet for a little season. He said, And to your fellow servants also. That's me and you, y'all. Amen. And their brethren. Amen. They should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Yes. Amen. Y'all give me a minute, man. You know, when God show you where your grandmama is, you know, I don't know about you, when God show you where your mama is, come on, Mother High. Amen. You know, Amen. when God show you where your daddy is. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. You know, I had to call my little sister. I said, baby, get on the line tonight. Because I know where grandma is. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Vicky, I know where your daddy is. Amen. I know. Yes, Lord. Amen. Samantha, I know. I know where Mother Moselle is. Hallelujah. I know. Since you ain't supposed to be in no Bible study, you don't learn nothing. Amen. Amen. That's not that that's not God's way. Amen. Okay, let's move on to the sixth seal. Remember, Satan comes on the sixth seal, the sixth trump, and the sixth vow. Because, you know, I've heard people say, well, you know, uh, uh, he has six, six, six uh, uh, on his forehead. And I have to say, you're a lie. You don't read this Bible. Because if you read that Bible, there ain't no way you could ever say that. Because if we just turn a few pages over here to Revelations chapter 13, okay, uh, let me find a verse. All right. Let me find it. So 
says that they had a mark in their forehead, not a mark on their forehead. Are you listening to me? Mark in their forehead, not on their forehead. Listen. Watch this. Verse 16. Or Revelation chapter 13. And he called them all, both and small, rich and poor, and free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand. Okay? Watch this. Or in their forehead. The mark is on their hand, and that means that they do the work of Satan unaware. Right there in verse 16, do you see what he says? And have a mark in their forehead. What's in their forehead? Mm -hmm that they believe a lie Amen. that the Antichrist is the Christ. Amen. It's in their forehead. Didn't say on, in their forehead. So I don't know where you get this 666 across somebody's forehead. You think the devil's that stupid? <laughs> Come on now. You see 666 in somebody's forehead, you can ready to get your coat. Amen. <laughs> he's, 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 it's a deception that's in somebody's mind. Yes, it ain't on right. your forehead, it's in your forehead. It's what you believe. Amen. Now, let me show you Satan. Let me show you Satan because all of y'all talking about, you know, uh, listen, you know, he doesn't come last. He comes on the sixth seal. Okay? His number is 666, a number that has been enumerated from the beginning of time. 666. Amen. It's when he comes. It's when he comes. He comes Amen. on the sixth seal, six trump, six vial. Tell somebody to stay in the word. Hang with me. Lord, my time is almost out. I got I to gotta get down now. He said, I beheld when I had opened up the sixth seal. Somebody say six seal. Six seal, six seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Let me tell you something, say. Satan appears, but the only problem is, is fake. Mm -hmm. He's faking something that's in Mark chapter 13. I want to show you what he's faking. All right, I want you to look at the scripture. Let's stay in the word. Stay in the word. Mm -hmm. He said, I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and there was a great earthquake and the sun became black. You see what that says? And sackcloth mm -hmm. of hair and the moon became as blood. Right? Okay, now I'll go to Mark chapter 13, and I want to show you what he's calling himself faking. I told you, he's a fake imitation. Let me show you the real thing. Go to Mark chapter 13, verse 24. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened. You see that? Mm -hmm. He said, mm -hmm. and the moon will not give its light. Do you mm -hmm. see anything? About the, about the do you do you see anything here about uh, 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 about the sun becoming black, or do you see anything about the moon becoming as blood? Nope. Uh -uh. Let's keep reading. He said the stars will fall from the sky. You see what he said? What I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the heavenly bodies will be shaken. You know why it's shaking? Because Satan is thrown out of heaven. Now, you got a lot of people that think it's Satan walking around here on earth. Listen, don't be crazy. Just like we got angels down here doing God's work, Satan got Amen. demons down here doing God's doing his work. Now, Amen. Satan is accused of the brethren. So he's Amen. not able to come into heaven, but he goes into the heavenlies. He cannot come into Amen. heaven because the Amen. Bible said nothing shall defile. So he has a certain place that he can come to and accuse this. everything we do, accuse us every day. But he can't go to where God is. Amen. Amen. Now do you see what I mean by his faith? Now watch what he says. Verse 13. And the stars of heaven fall unto the earth, even as, listen, fig tree casts her untimely figs. Now how do you know it's Satan? Because let me tell you something, when Jesus comes, it's on time. When Satan comes, it's an untimely time. <laughs> Amen. It's not time for the figs to be harvested. We the one. It, it doesn't say that he comes as a timely fig. He comes at an untimely fig. In other words, what is he trying to say? A fig is harvested at a certain season. But Satan comes... Come on, somebody. Satan comes at a season where it's not supposed to be harvested. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. That's why he says untimely fig. He didn't say mm -hmm. timely fig. Mm -hmm. He comes for a harvest out of season. Why is it out of season? Because Jesus is coming back for the harvest, and he's coming to get those who believe that the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, hammer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Pastor, you there? They got dropped. You must have got disconnected. Mm -hmm. Got a little excited. You <laughs> can't hit the button. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I add something until the pastor comes back? Yeah, this Pastor E, I'm back. Mm hmm You know what just okay. happened. The devil don't like it. You understand? Amen. The devil don't like that. Amen. We we don't seen it happen before. We we not we're not uh, uh, blind to the devil's devices. Are you listening Amen. to me? Okay, Amen. so we already know what that was. All right, knock mm -hmm. me right off the line. But let's get back into it. Let, 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 let's really go now. We're gonna make him real mad. He said, and the stars in heaven fell, the earth even as a fig tree cast of an untimely fig when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Now, I want you to understand something. This mighty wind is being shaken because God always changes situations by the power of nature. <laughs> nature. Watch this. Watch this. He said, and the heavens depart as a scroll. The heavens depart as a scroll. The heavens depart as a scroll. Let's see if we can deal with that for a minute. Y'all still with me? Say amen. Say amen. 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 All right. All right. Now watch this. Somebody say, Pastor, you're going to go over time. I sure am. And I amen. hope you got time. Amen. That's your problem. You're always trying to run out when it gets good. <laughs> People that make the devil mad. Sit down. Sit down and learn something. Okay? <laughs> All right. Sit down and learn something. Where I'm at, verse 12. Verse, verse 12. Okay, it's an imitation of what I showed you in Mark 13. Okay? All right, that's the difference. Mark 13, verse 24, 25, and 26. Okay? Now, I'm going to say a word to you, and it's going to sound strange, but this chapter, this chapter 6 and verse 12 is talking about Satan's other name that you might have not ever heard before is he's called the spurious Messiah. Everything mm -hmm. remember, remember, remember. Second Thessalonians chapter two talks about when you see the abomination of desolation sitting in a place he ought not be, appearing to be God, claim to be God, and exalt himself above everything that is God. That's right. All right. So you know from that scripture that Satan is going to play a role. Now, mm -hmm. all my life, people have always taught me that this word antichrist means against Christ. But it does not mean against Christ. Yes, he's against Christ, but that's not what antichrist means. What antichrist means is instead of Christ. And it's a difference in being against Christ and pretending to be Christ. Are you listening to me? And this is the reason why he's called the spurious Messiah. The spurious Messiah. And what that word spurious Messiah means, he's not a genuine. Okay? He says not genuine, genuine proceeding from the true source. Not genuine, but proceeding from the true source. Pretending. He's a counterfeit. He's false. Amen. Verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell to earth as a fig cast of her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Satan and all his angels are kicked out of heaven. Now, Revelation chapter 12 says it was, listen, it was silence in heaven for an hour. Silence. Silence in heaven for her. Don't, don't let me have to go there because we'll be there for another hour. But I'm telling you, we're going to get there. All right? Now. I want you to look at verse 14. And the heavens depart as a scroll when it's rolled together and every mountain, nation, the word mountain always means nation, mm -hmm. and island were moved out of their places. 
Now, why is that? Because Hebrews chapter 12 says, listen, God is taking over. Are you listening to me? Things are all about to change. The kingdoms of the earth are becoming the kingdoms of God. <laughs> you understand? There's a paradigm shift. <laughs> okay? All right? God's taking over. That's what that means, verse 15. He said, and the kings of the earth. Now, this is what I really want you to see. Slow it down. Hang in here a little bit longer. The kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves. Wait a minute. Whoa. Wait a minute, Pastor E. Why are they hiding? I'm going to show you why they're hiding. In the dens and in the rocks and in the mountains. Let me show you why they're hiding. See, it's going to be a whole lot of Christians hiding too. And you know why? Because didn't nobody teach them this word. Yeah. Some of you, for the first time in your life, you're sitting down paying real close attention. Real mm -hmm. close attention. And you got your finger on that scripture where I'm at right now. And I'm getting ready to show you why. These mighty men, so many preachers, so many apostles, so many bishops, so many prophets, these mighty men mm. are hiding. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you why they hide. Because many Christians are going to be hiding too. Right mm -hmm. along with the rest of them. Because they believe the lie. Mm -hmm. They Amen. believe the lie. Mm -hmm. See, they went with the first thing smoking. Because mm -hmm. all our lives we've been taught that we're going to be raptured right out the earth. That's what we mm -hmm. were taught. We were taught yeah. that the church is gone after Revelation chapter 4. But nobody ever took time to show us Revelation chapter 1, and I need to go back to it. Revelation mm -hmm. chapter 1, watch this, and verse 20. Because nobody ever taught us the mystery of the seven stars. Let me prove it to you. The mystery of the seven stars, right in Revelation chapter 1, verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which y'all saw in the right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. This is the mystery. Uh -huh. This is the mystery. Watch what he said. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And he ain't talking to no angel. He's talking about the pastors and the leaders of these seven churches in Asia Minor. But saints, yeah. the key thing is what I'm about to show you. And the seven candlesticks, well, listen to me, Revelation chapter 1, verse 20, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the what? Seven are the what? Seven churches. Seven, seven what? Seven churches. Seven churches. Seven churches. Seven churches. Seven churches. Seven churches. Now, saints, let's stop for a minute. The reason why they think that the church is raptured out of the earth and you don't see the church no more after Revelation chapter 4 is because they never taught them that the church has a brand new name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. The church is the light of the world. Mm -hmm. The Amen. church is the light that's in the earth. The Amen. church is the candlestick. He Amen. said you were once in darkness, but you see the marvelous light. So walk ye therefore as children of the light, the light, the light, the light, the light, Amen. the light, the light, Amen. and have no fellowship with darkness. Amen. He said you're supposed to be the salt of earth. You're supposed Amen. to be light. Amen. Amen. The new name of the church that was given in Revelation chapter 1 verse 20 is the church is called the candlestick. Amen. Amen. So when they say they don't see the church no more, after Revelation chapter 4, it's because nobody ever taught them that the church has a brand new name. Amen. And since it was only two churches that God was happy with, the church of Smyrna and the church of Philadelphia, and you don't see none of the rest of the church because they didn't make it. Amen. I want you to look at Revelation chapter 11 and verse 4. Revelation 11 verse 4. Tell somebody it's time to get in this word. Listen, Amen. let's stop Amen. playing with God. This word. Stop Amen. playing with God. Amen. Let's get real. I want Amen. you to look at Revelation chapter 11 and verse 4. Revelation 11 and 4. Don't tell me the church is wrapped out of this earth after Revelation chapter 4. You've got to be crazy. 
You already, you're already a man. Romans chapter 11 and verse 4. Look what it says. These are, let me go back to verse 3. Verse 3, Revelation chapter 11, verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. Okay? Mm -hmm. The witnesses are here. He said, and they shall prophesy a thousand and two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. You see that? We talk uh -huh. about what's going to happen at the end. He said, and these are the two olive trees. That's from Zechariah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And the two what? Candlesticks. Candlesticks. What? Candlesticks. Wait a minute, what? Two candlesticks standing before God, where? Of the earth. Of the earth. That's the church. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go back over here because I done got excited. I got to calm down, y'all. Let's go back over here. Y'all stay in the word. Stay in the word. Stand the word. Amen. Amen. The reason why these kings of the earth, these mighty men, you know why they're asking for the rocks to fall on them? Because they didn't teach you this book of Revelation. Amen. They didn't teach you that the Antichrist comes first. They didn't teach you that. Mm -hmm. They taught you you're going to be raptured out and you'll be gone before the Antichrist get here. Let me tell you something. Let, 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 let me move on a little bit more. Let me show you this. Verse 16. Stay with me. He said, and said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us. Okay? Mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. now, if they wraps it out, why are they sitting there saying fall on us? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And hide us from the face of him that sit upon the throne. That's interesting, mm -hmm. ain't it? Mm -hmm. And from the wrath mm -hmm. of the Lamb. Okay? Mm -hmm. Watch this. For the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? Let me tell you who's going to be able to stand. You, you and me, us. We're going to be able to stand. Every last one of y'all on this line tonight, you're going to be able to stand. You know why? Because you know the truth. Amen. He said there'll be two in the field, one to be taken and one to be left. All our lives we heard that the first will be last, but the last will be first. But yes, sir, you've been taught to be the first. Why are you trying to be the first? He says the last will be first, and Amen. the first will be last. Amen. Amen. Listen, what about the scripture that says, he who endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Let's go to chapter 7, verse 1, and I don't care what time it is. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. Amen. He said, and after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea. Now, let me tell you why. Watch this. Because the end cannot come until all of us, even the nation of Israel, is saved, is sealed, is sealed. Amen. I didn't say saved, I said sealed. Amen. Nor any, or any tree. And I saw another Amen. angel ascending. From the east, having the seal of what? The living God. Living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Okay? Amen. Watch this. He said, hurt not the earth, neither mm -hmm. the sea, nor the trees, mm -hmm. until we have sealed the what? Servants. Uh, uh, God, where? In their foreheads. In their foreheads. In their foreheads. That means they got the truth. They got a seal on them. And I heard the number of them, Revelation chapter 7 verse 4, and I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes and children of Israel. All of them got to be sealed. Remember, God's never going to leave Israel out. You can forget that. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Now, you can be a, the Bible said, listen, he'll bless those that bless the Jews, and he'll curse mm -hmm. those that curse them. So you better mm -hmm. get to loving some Jews, okay? Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Jesus, you know what? Mm -hmm. He said, now, the tribe mm -hmm. of Judah was sealed, 12,000. The tribe of Reuben was mm -hmm. sealed, 12,000. The tribe of Gad, 
12,000. Mm -hmm. I'm right there, brother. That's seven Chapter 7, verse 6. The child of Asher, 12,000. Let's drop down this, verse 7. The child of Simeon, 12,000. The child mm -hmm. of Zebul, 12,000. Joseph, 12,000. The child of Benjamin, was still 12,000. Now, let's stop right there and look at verse 9. I'm almost done. Just give me a minute. Let me tell you something. All this mess going around about these black people saying we black Hebrews. Let me tell you something, saints. You listen to me good. If they're black Hebrews, why I didn't see none of them in here? <laughs> it ain't bad. That's interesting. Bad. Amen. It's not bad. But now, this is what I had to show some brothers. I mm. said, listen, you see all these different tribes. They're pure mm. Jews of the tribe mm. of Judah. Amen. I said, but I want you to see this verse 9. Because now, if you up here, you're going to have to tell me who this is down here. Amen. Look at verse 9. He said, after this, that's after the, all of the nation of Israel was sealed. You see that, Samantha? You see that, Mother Hobbs? You see this, Mother Lumpson? Are y'all listening yeah. today? Yeah. 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 You see all Amen. these people that were sealed. But now you're going to have to tell me who this is right here. If you're mm -hmm. a black Hebrew, you have to tell me who this mm -hmm. is. He said, after this. I think Amen. God knows the difference between before and after, right? Amen. Yeah. 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 Okay. I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number no mm -hmm. of all nations. Mm -hmm. Now, that word nation, you can look it up when I get off the phone because I got people like to Google. Go Google that. Mm -hmm. That word nation <laughs> means ethnos. That means the ethnic people. Ethnic people. Mm -hmm. That means that means Chinese, Black, Puerto Rican, mm -hmm. huh? Portuguese, mm -hmm. Japanese, mm -hmm. Chinese, or whatever, and kindred mm -hmm. and people in tongues. That means people all different nations, all different kindreds, mm -hmm. all different tongues. Mm -hmm. Stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and cried with a loud voice, saying, "Salvation." To our God which sitteth upon the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around about the throne, about the elders and the four beasts fell down and listened and, Amen. on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Amen, blessings and glory and wisdom. Why? Because everything has shifted. The kingdoms of the world have become the kingdoms of God. Look what they Amen. say. Amen. 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 Blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power might be to the gods of heaven and ever. And look what he says, verse 13. And one of the elders, elders said unto me, one of these which are arrayed in these white robes, I just showed you, didn't I? Mm -hmm. He said, and whence did they come? And I said unto him, sir, thou knoweth. He said, you knoweth. He said, you knoweth. And let me tell you. And he said to me, these are they which came out of the great tribulation. Good God in heaven. Amen. All of my life, these people have been teaching me I ain't going through the tribulation. <laughs> and here it is in black and white. Black and white. Mm -hmm. Black and white. Mm -hmm. It says, these are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Man. Therefore, are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple? And he that sit upon the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more. Lord have mercy. Amen. Neither will they thirst anymore. Amen. Neither shall the sun light on them or any heat. We don't need it because Jesus is the light. Amen. 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 For the lamb is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. And shall lead them unto living fountains of living waters, and God shall wipe away all the tears from Amen. their eyes. Amen. Thanks. I got one more thing to show you, and I'm going to let you go. I want you to go to Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. Reverend chapter 17. 
Revelation chapter 17 and verse 1, it says, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me. Then come to me, come hither, and I will show unto you the judgment of the great whore which sitteth upon many waters. Amen. He said, the last thing I want to show you tonight is that that judgment is going to come on them that have taught God's people to fly, to save their soul. I got one more thing. I said one more thing, but this is going to be my last thing. Go to Mark. I want you to go to Mark chapter 13. And I got a point I need to prove because somebody going to text me. Somebody going to email me. If you wanna, if you wanna see us all, or if if you wanna look us up on YouTube, it's Magnify Him PHL. If you wanna connect with our North Carolina church, it's Magnify Him North Carolina. Okay, you wanna find me second and fourth. I'll be in Oxford. First and third, I'll be in Philly. Come see me. Let's talk about it. I want to show you this Revelation chapter thirteen. Revelation chapter thirteen. Mark. Watch this. I'm sorry, Mark. I'm saying Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. This is me, Pastor Manny. Hey, Manny. How you doing, man? God bless you, man. It's all like popcorn, brother. Let's get this thing right. Watch this. All right. Now watch this. Watch this. You know what? I got to get the King James Version. Let me get another Bible here. Let me grab one of these off the shelf up here. If all the pages ain't falling out, let me see. <laughs> Y'all hold on a minute. And I got to go into the archives. Y'all wait a minute. Mark chapter 13. Chesney. Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Lord have mercy. So many pages in here. Lord have mercy. Look at this thing. Y'all pray with me. The Bible says, wait on the Lord. What y'all upset for? Wait on him. Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Amen. I got one more thing I need. I got one more thing I need Amen. to show y'all. Okay. I don't want you to miss this. All right. Let's hold on a minute. Yeah, All right. <laughs> keep holding on. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Uh -huh. Oh, y'all just hold on a minute. Now, first of all, I want to show you something. Because, you know, many people say they're going to be raptured out of this earth. Let me show you how it really happens. Mark 13, verse 27. He says, and then shall he send his angels mm -hmm. and shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from the othermost parts of the earth to the othermost parts of heaven. That means he's going to gather them together. All right? Now, watch this. He said, Verse 24, and I'm going to leave you all alone after this for real. Mark chapter 13, verse 24. Now, you know, there are people who think they're not going through the tribulation, but that's a lie. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they died all these terrible deaths, but mm -hmm. you ain't going to be touched at all. Jesus went all the way to the cross, bled, suffered, and died, but you ain't got to go through nothing. You got to be kidding me. Mm -hmm. Mark chapter 13, verse 24. Now watch this. He said, but in those days, now you know, I believe God knows the difference between before and after. Can, can we just agree to that? Amen. Okay, God Amen. knows the difference between before yes. and after. Amen. Amen. Yes. Okay? Now there's people all over the world on this line. I'm not asking you to be deep and philosophical. I'm only asking you, do you know the difference between before and after? You know the difference. Okay? Amen. Okay, all right. Amen. I just want to make sure, because when this point is made, it's going to be settled in your spirit. Amen. Mark chapter 13, verse 24. But in those days, 
Mm-hmm. Right? You see that? We're talking about the tribulation. Mm-hmm. After Amen. that mm-hmm. tribulation. Mm-hmm. After mm-hmm. that okay. tribulation. Did he say before? He didn't say no, before. Happened. He said after that oh, tribulation. Yeah. The sun mm-hmm. shall be darkened and the moon shall not give its light. All that means mm-hmm. it's a Hebraism that means all eyes will see him when he comes. That's mm-hmm. the fake thing that Satan tried it. The imposter tried mm-hmm. to pull. Okay? Mm-hmm. But I want you to see this. Verse 25. And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. Watch mm-hmm. this. Verse 26. And then, mm-hmm. verse 24 says, after the tribulation, right? I just want to make right. sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Verse 26 says, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. After the tribulation. Amen. Yes. After the tribulation. Black and white. After the tribulation. Black and white. That's the Bible. Now, I don't care what you've been taught. I don't care what church you go to. I don't care who your pastor is. I don't care. Listen, listen. I'm telling you what the Word says. Amen. Now, you got a decision you got to make. Are you going to follow God? Or are you going to follow man? Because don't let me go back here and show you how it says. In the last days, men will be the ones to deceive you. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. It's in there. Amen. Now, 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 listen. I, I got to go, but it's in there. Okay? Amen. Now, I can go another, listen, I can go all night. But I'm telling you, it's in there. All right? Amen. So now, thanks. You have seen the seven seals. And what did you learn from the seven seals? Let me recap. The first thing you learned is that Satan came on that sixth seal. Mm-hmm. You've always been taught that Christ mm-hmm. come first. But you found out tonight that's a lie. Satan comes mm-hmm. first. Because Amen. let me tell you something. If Satan, if Jesus came before Satan came, who in the world are you thinking they daggone right mind going to stick around here and wait for the devil? He's just crazy. <laughs> See, you ain't never thought about some of the things. I, mean, I just want to talk to you tonight. You know what I'm saying? I just want to keep it real. We tell you, man, listen, I don't care if you're from the country, if you're from the city. We got people from Cali. We got people from Florida, man. people from Georgia, New Jersey, <laughs> Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware. Come on now, North Carolina. Hey, you man. tell me. <laughs> If Jesus comes first, who is big enough fool to Amen. stay here and wait for the devil? <laughs> the devil got to come before Amen. Jesus Christ. Because if he don't come before Jesus Christ, he ain't going to fool nobody. Amen. Amen. You mean to tell me you think God is going to let the devil wind this world up? The devil is a lie. Amen. I know. Thank you. It's Amen. time for you to really get this word and start studying the word for yourself. Are you listening Amen. to me? Praise God. You can make your first commitment to be on this Bible study. Mm. I ain't even got the I haven't even got the Revelation chapter thirteen where I teach you about the mark of the beast. People running around here thinking it's going to be a 666 on somebody's forehead. Who in the world is going to be hanging around somebody got 666 on their darn forehead? I'd be the shot them with a shotgun. <laughs> y'all, 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 y'all pray for me. It's Manny's birthday. Pray for me on your birthday, man. I need some prayer. So some people, I don't even know where they get this mess from. It don't make no sense. Amen. Danny said, don't make no sense. Amen. Somebody telling you you're going to fly away. And Second Peter chapter 3 says, I see a new earth and a new heaven coming down. A new Jerusalem coming down. Amen. And you're going to fly. Where are you going? Where are you going to pass Jesus on the way? Now <laughs> <laughs> see, y'all sitting up laughing, but, but you know why you're laughing? Because you realize the truth now. Amen. It don't even make Amen. sense. It don't make sense. Amen. It don't make sense. And they Amen. never told you that this whole rapture theory came from a woman by the name of Margaret McDonald, who was overseas in England or some Amen. foreign country, and she had a dream that the earth was being that that, that that the believers were being raptured out of the earth, but they didn't call it the rapture back then. Back then they call it the any moment now doctrine. You don't believe me? 
Get on your phone and look up Margaret McDonald, and you'll find out exactly where it came from. That didn't come from Christ. That came from Margaret McDonald, because the Bible don't teach that. And somebody say, well, Pastor, over there it says that, 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 that over there in Mark, it says about, about, about how, how, how we're going to fly away. <laughs> really? <laughs> Can I explain something to you? I want to tell you something. I want you to hear me good. You got to realize something. Second Thessalonians, okay, tells you what happens in the second coming. But First Whoa. Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, chapter four, it tells you the question was where the dead are. It wasn't the second coming of Christ. Amen. And then many people had to sit down and show them that they say, it's tough to talk about where the dead are. They wanted to know, if when we die, would those that are already dead precede us? And he began to teach. Okay? Amen. He said, we were, that, that we were, listen, how are we going to beat them when they're already with him? Amen. Are you listening? They're already in their spirit body. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how are we going to proceed them if they are, listen, I just show you where they at, they under the altar. Amen. How are you going to beat them, they already with Jesus Christ? That's Amen. ridiculous. Amen. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 teaches us what happens at his second coming. Yeah. You need to read it. Amen. Now saints, I'm going to leave y'all alone because somebody say that's too much Bible for some of y'all, I'm going to let it go. All right, let's go to God in prayer. Amen. First of all, I got one thing I need to ask, Pastor Hart. God bless everybody tonight, you know, for being on the line. God bless all of you. We got people all over the world listening tonight. I want to know if there are any questions. You don't never let nobody teach you. They're supposed to be a pastor or a teacher. They do not let the students or those that are listening or being discipled ask any questions. That's Amen. the first sign. That's the first sign of a pimp pastor. Amen. Yeah, I got only his question. opinion matters. Amen. Give it to me. Uh, who who wrote the revelations? Who wrote all that document? Well, what it, what well you got to uh, realize something. Now listen, John. They say John is a revelator, but John ain't the revelator. It's Christ is the revelator. Christ, Christ is giving John what to write. You understand? Know because remember, John is in the spirit on the Lord's day. Yeah. Wow. And since he's in the spirit on the Lord's day, God is dictating to him what to give to you. Remember, John was, remember I taught you that John was over there on the Isle of Patmos, okay? And he was over top of this, he was over top of this pagan deity, okay? This pagan worshiping temple. And John was up on the mountain, okay? And after he got taken by Domitian, and he was dragged through oil, and he still lived to the shock of all Rome, the mission said, leave that man alone. He went back to the Isle of Patmos. Back over top of that temple of Artemis. Back over top of the temple. And when John got back to that temple over Artemis, where he took over from Paul. See, Paul was the one that was running the church. But when Paul died, John was the one that was leading up all the churches. And at that time, when, Paul, when he got finished back to the Isle of Patmos, that's when God came in and showed John the book of Revelation. John went in the spirit Amen. on the Lord's day and showed him everything. So Jesus is the one telling John what to write. John is just the writer, but Jesus is dictating this book of Revelation. All right? Because remember, sir, always remember this, Manny. Remember this. We can't learn anything about God that God don't teach us about him. <laughs> okay? Okay? So even no matter who wrote it, they got the revelation from God. Amen? All right. Anybody else tonight got a question? Anybody else got any questions? Any questions? All right. Okay, saints, let's go to God. I pray you enjoy the Bible study tonight. Magnify him. All right, we're here every Tuesday Amen. night. We're also on here uh, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I come on Tuesday through Friday at about 9 o'clock. The women are here on Monday. They start at 8.30, and prayer starts at 8.30. You can visit our ministry. You can go out there and look out there on YouTube. We're out there. You can put Pastor Emmett Raglan, boom, it'll come up on your YouTube. All right, or Magnify Him Ministries, PHL. You'll see uh, our dear beloved son of the ministry. Minister Chesley Brandon, who's an excellent teacher. Amen. 
excellent preacher. And also you can catch Pastor Hart Amen. on first and third in Oxford. Okay, saints, let's go to God in prayer. Y'all still love me? Ain't nobody mad at me tonight, is y'all all right? All right, everybody all right? Yeah. All right. Okay, all right, let's go to God in prayer. Dear Lord, yes, Heavenly Lord. Father, we love you, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, we glorify you, God. We thank Amen. you for this word. We thank you for your teaching. Thank we you, realize, God. God, we can't do nothing without you. Lord, yeah. we're humble yeah. before you, God, because we realize, God, we just recycle God. God. But, God, you're everything. I thank you for what yeah. you've done tonight. I thank you for how you taught us yeah. tonight. I thank you for how you touched us with your little finger of love, woke us up, yeah. brought us to the line tonight, gave us understanding, gave us wisdom. So we're going to give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor yeah. for the great things that you, you have thank done. You. you have yeah. done. And I yeah. thank you, God for this opportunity to speak to such a wonderful people, the people that yes, are yours, Lord. they're not mine. They belong to you. Yes, and I thank you and praise you for this great opportunity. In Jesus' name, God bless you. I love everybody on the line tonight. Let's keep each other in prayer. Listen, it's Manny, yes, uh, Manny's birthday today. Let's say happy yes. birthday, Manny, everybody. Happy birthday, Manny! Happy birthday, Manny. Yes. 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 All right, yes. praise yes. God, yes. praise yes. God. Yes. All right. Amen. And Shayla, Amen. if you're on the line, I'm going to call you tomorrow because tomorrow is Shayla's birthday. Amen. 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 Praise God. All Amen. right. Well, I'll call you tomorrow, baby. I know your birthday tomorrow. I ain't going to forget you. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. Pastor Hart, I love you, man. Amen. I love you. God bless you. All right. Listen, don't forget, if you if you miss anything tonight, you can go to uh, Magnify Him North Carolina, and Deacon Tracy will have it up uh uh, maybe a couple of days it'll be up on there. You can get this teaching from tonight. Listen, we love all of y'all. We bless y'all in Jesus' name. From Pastor E and Samantha, we love you with all our hearts. And thank you for the love. Amen. All right. And J everybody get off mute. We got to do our three amens. Come on, everybody off mute. Everybody off mute. If you're on mute, you're wrong. Amen. All right. Y'all ready? Amen. 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 Amen.